Hey everyone, so this is a new series of tutorials for giving you a better understanding of music theory, and then with this theory, a better foundation for composing your own music. We're going to cover keys, scales, modes, meter, and I'll be making these as practical as possible writing music along the way. Okay, here we go. The first thing we need to cover is how to input notes. Uh, the keys on your keyboard can be mapped to the notes on a piano. So in Pico 8, Z is a C and Q is a C an octave above. And from Z and Q, you can create the piano keyboard. Uh, so the rows across from Z and Q are the white notes. And the rows across from S and 2 are all the black notes. And here's your first music theory term, uh, a semitone. Uh, a semitone is the shortest distance between two notes. So on the piano, this is a semitone, this is a semitone, and this is a semitone. And in Pico 8, these are all semitones from C to C sharp, E to F, G sharp to A, G to G sharp. These are all semitones. And just for fun, let's hear what two notes both a semitone apart sound like. Yeah, very dissonant and crunchy. So a semitone is like our basic unit of measuring the relationship between pitches. And uh, when you sequence a bunch of semitones together, you get the chromatic scale. Now, because I'm a piano player, it's very easy for me to visualize the piano on the keyboard so I can get the chromatic scale fairly easily. Fairly easily. Uh, if you're not a piano player, then what you can do is open up the pitch editor by hitting tab and drawing in the chromatic scale. It's a little bit slower, but it is fairly easy to visualize the chromatic scale this way. And you know when you have, well, these are all semitones, but you know when they're not semitones because you can see that the distance between two notes, like here, is greater than the distance of the other notes. So it is fairly easy to visualize the chromatic scale using this method. Let's see, we got, okay, so there we've got our 12 notes right here. Each octave has 12 notes from C to B. So let's write something using the chromatic scale. Uh, we haven't covered the idea of key yet, so we're not going to worry about there being a pitch hierarchy. What I'm going to do is use what's called the 12 tone technique. So let's uh, so we've got all our 12 tones together, but we're going to reorder them uh, kind of semi randomly. So I'm just going to kind of put them all over the place like this. Let's put this one here. Just got to remember to delete them after. And now I'm going to clump them all up together and hopefully this sounds pretty random. Yeah, it's going to sound weird, but that's the chromatic scale. And we're going to use this order as the starting point for our composition. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed this up, let's say. Yeah, that's cool, and let's loop it. Okay, and then we're gonna use this in the instrument editor. So we've got instrument one. And let's use instrument one. There we go. Let's see what this sounds like. And let's play with it. Okay, it's re-triggering the, the 12 tones uh, after every 5 effect. So let's... Uh, okay, that does that same, the same thing as well. Okay, so let's just leave it as this. Let's also change the instrument. And maybe let's play with the volume. How about that? I 
So what would happen if we increased it by a semitone? Okay, so now let's uh, create something in low frequencies. So let's go back to the row. And we're going to copy that into SFX9. And let's use this instrument and let's put it down an octave. And let's just repeat this like that. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, cool. But how about if we made them all short? Okay, sounding weird. I like it. And let's get something a little bit more melodic. So let's get, uh, again, copy our 12 tone row into SFX 10. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna maybe spread these around a little bit. And we'll move them up an octave, maybe two octaves. And let's fill it in. this cool and how about uh adding some volume tails to these. So I'm increasing the volume a little bit because it's the melody and I want to make sure it's in the forefront. And we'll add some vibrato to the ends of the longer notes. And let's see what it sounds like. Okay, so uh, I think I, what I'd like to do is add another part, maybe to complement the bass part, because it sounds like it's very empty, kind of in the middle of the frequency range. Actually, I, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to increase this by one. Okay, and then I'm gonna copy this into a new SFX. And let's put this maybe up an octave so that I've highlighted everything and hit shift I and then up a semitone. So this is gonna sound really crunchy in relationship to the, to the bass part. And I'm going to turn down the volume. This is gonna sound really crunchy. And let's repeat that. Actually, we'll repeat it this way. And let's play with this. So just create some more volume variation. And let's bring up this kind of ambient thing a little bit more. Same thing, maybe a little bit more volume variation. So we'll kind of like make it go up and down like wavy like this. Okay, let's hear what it sounds like repeated. Very weird, but lots of things that you can play with. Uh, if I was to develop this further, what I would do is take this row and reverse it. So create a brand new row, but copy and paste them in reverse like this and then use the new row as the basis of a new section or development. So what would that sound like? Yeah, so creating more bass lines, more melodies with this. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can invert it. So what inversion means is when you have the original row here, you can see how it moves up by two semitones and then up by 
what is that? Five semitones. So it goes plus two, plus five, plus one. So what I would do is instead of plus, it would just be all minus. So it would be minus two, minus five, uh, minus one. And that's how you create an inversion of your row. And then you can take the inversion and then you can reverse that. So you have a retrograde inversion. So those are semitones and the chromatic scale. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to see what we can do with whole tones, which is the second shortest distance between notes. Thanks for watching.